Hey everyone, how are you doing? I just, I, it's so echoey and I can't focus. I'm, all I'm hearing is my voice play back in my ears from the echo, but it won't be for long. Just bear with me for a couple of weeks, okay? You know, I always get comments telling me how watery my eyes look all the time. And I never really noticed it until I got this really big computer that I'm looking up at because it's all the way up there. <laughs> but now I can see what you're all talking about. Why do they look so watery? What is, it looks like I just got done crying. Hold, hold on, hold on. That's what it looks like, isn't it? Actually, wait, let's pause for a second. I forgot to mention I do have merch out. It looks like this. I got some hoodies and I got some crew necks. So if you do want to get any of those, you can go to samcollinshop.com. And oh yeah, if you haven't already, make sure you unsubscribe from this channel and shut off all my notifications. It helps me a lot. All right, so what do we got today for a surprise? We've got another PragerU ad. This is actually so exciting because I love reacting to PragerU ads. They are the worst thing in the world. It's called Why Girls Become Boys and it's by the one and only, I'll let her introduce herself for you. If you know any middle or high school girls today, or if you are one yourself, it would not be surprising if you know someone who identifies as transgender. The latest statistics indicate that 2% of American high school students now identify as transgender, and the overwhelming majority of them are teenage girls. Ooh, what a big percentage. Wow. It's Abigail Schreer, by the way. Is that how you say her name? She She's an author. She wrote this book. I'm sure if you're trans, maybe even if you're not, you've heard of it. Horrible book, by the way. Before I go into any of these points, I'm going to base most of it off of my experience as an FTM person, just because I feel like that would be beneficial. Between 2016 and 2017 alone, the number of females seeking gender surgery in America quadrupled. But if you graduated high school over a decade ago, it was unlikely that you knew anyone who was transgender. I mean, that's a fair point. I graduated high school seven years ago. <laughs> oh, I didn't know it was that long ago, but uh, I did in 2014. I was the, one of the first trans students um, at my high schools because I went to multiple high schools. Uh, that was just like three schools. So I don't know how the rest of the world works with that. And I'm gonna assume over a decade ago, being trans wasn't as accepted as it is now. So most people would be stealth or they just wouldn't come out. That's something we got to think about, right? Because according to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the condition underlying it afflicted roughly 1 in 10,000 people, or 0.01% of the population. Almost none of these cases were teenage girls. In fact, before 2012, there was no scientific or medical literature discussing adolescent girls who wanted to transition to the opposite sex. That is such specific phrasing. And where is the source? There was nothing. There was nothing before 2012 about trans people wanting to transition. FTM. I transitioned in 2012, so I read a lot of information in the years prior. That doesn't mean that we didn't know about transgender individuals. So why would there not be literature on them if you knew they existed? Like there has to be. There has to be at least one. Also, I want to point out that it has been pretty socially acceptable for a girl to be a tomboy or to just be boyish growing up. So I feel like maybe FTM people weren't taken as seriously, especially back in the day, because people would just be like, oh, you're just a tomboy. You act like a boy. It's cool. But when a boy acts like a girl, that's a whole different story. So I feel like that could come into play here. You know, maybe there wasn't as much research because they didn't take them as seriously because they're just tomboys. Everyone said, oh, Sam's a tomboy. Actually, I'm a John boy. <laughs> Gender dysphoria, the severe discomfort in one's biological sex, has been studied for nearly 100 years. It almost always involved boys who began feeling it between the ages of two and four and were strong and persistent in their assertions to everyone around them that they were really girls. When a phenomenon that affects one half of a population, boys, suddenly begins affecting the other half, girls, and when its age of onset shifts from preschool to adolescence, something significant is happening. I'm just gonna go ahead and take a guess here. Maybe it's puberty. Once you hit puberty, you realize, oh shit, this trans thing is real. Cause that happened to me. Yeah, I felt it when I was young like that too. But when I hit puberty, came over. <laughs> it was it was so much worse. It was like I've, I put a magnifying glass onto my dysphoria. In 2016, Brown University public health researcher Lisa Lippman began studying the sudden spike in trans identification of teenage girls. She concluded that peer influence and social media influence had a lot to do with this trans teen phenomenon. Trans teen phenomenon? <laughs> People just feel safer online. So like me, 
trying to come out 10 years ago online would look a lot different than me coming out today because it's more accepted today. So people are going to feel more confident and they're gonna be less scared to come out. I'm gonna even say like 12 years ago, nobody on social media talked about that. Nobody had pronouns in bio. There was no trans flag that people posted. There was literally nothing. After all, based on parent reports, none of these girls had exhibited symptoms of gender dysphoria at the age that it typically first presents, early childhood. YouTube, Reddit, Tumblr, TikTok, and Instagram all host popular social media influencers, today's version of Hollywood stars, who insist that if you feel uncomfortable in your body, you're probably trans. Do you guys think Abigail has ever watched one of my videos? <laughs> we don't say that. Do we say that? I'm gonna have to go back and look at all of my videos now. Come on, Abigail, you could just say Sam Collins. Just say it. I could use those extra, what is this? Is that a million views? That's a million views. I could use that extra million views. Give me a couple thousand dollars. Why don't you do it? Promote me. Many promise that if you start a course of testosterone, all of your problems will go away. Has any trans influencer promised that to you? If you start testosterone, you know what? I'm going to start it. I'm going to do it right now. If you're feeling bad about yourself, start testosterone. It'll make all your problems go away. Go into the clinic and buy it right now because that's possible. That's physically possible. It'll change your life. There's every reason to believe that these girls are experiencing real psychological pain. Rates of anxiety, depression, and instances of self-harm are all at record levels for this generation. Wow, I wonder why. Maybe if you look outside for five seconds, Abigail, you would see why this generation has deteriorating mental health. It's not like it was 50 years ago. Have you seen the way that the world works? It sucks. <laughs> it sucks big time, big time. Maybe that plays a role in the mental deterioration of the youth. I don't know. Maybe it's social media too. I understand how that can be toxic, right? A quick fix becomes very tempting. So it doesn't take much, a YouTube video, a friend's suggestion, to get a troubled girl to buy into the fantasy that gender transition is the answer. When has anybody sold this idea on the internet? Seriously, I know a lot of trans YouTubers. I have watched a lot of trans YouTubers in my lifetime and nobody was like, gender transition is, is the answer if you're depressed and anxious. They might say, hey, if you're trans, transitioning does help. Unfortunately for these girls who do not have typical gender dysphoria, gender transition rarely offers relief. I mean, if you're not trans, yeah, it's not gonna, it's not gonna offer you any relief. It'll offer you grief, maybe, but, but not relief. So that makes sense, yeah. Hey, what's up? It's me editing. For this next clip of the PragerU video, I actually want to let another trans creator respond to this. Her name is Riley Grace Rashong. She does a lot of research documents. She streams, she does YouTube videos and all that great stuff. And I thought her response was very, very well put together. So here, here's that. Gender transition rarely offers relief. And it's a catastrophic mistake for psychologists, educators, and the medical establishment to rush these teens towards a solution that will almost certainly harm rather than heal. The reason all prevailing psychologists, educators, and the medical establishment support social and medical transition is that multiple studies have demonstrated that gender affirming medical therapy and supported social transition in childhood have been shown to correlate with improved psychological functioning of gender variant youth. For example, two studies of the 35 trans youth found not only that all participants benefited from the gender-affirming medical care received, but also evidence challenging the idea that treatment such as puberty suppression and hormones is only beneficial to those who have suffered from lifelong extreme gender dysphoria. Additionally, studies have shown that after adjusting for personal characteristics and social support, chosen name use in more contexts was associated with lower depression, suicidal ideation, and suicidal behavior. And otherwise, socially transitioned transgender children reported depression and self-worth that did not differ from their match control or sibling peers. This video is just transphobia repackaged as pseudoscience. Because here's what's not in dispute. Unnecessary medical gender transition causes irreversible damage, high risk of infertility, sexual dysfunction, and the creation of a permanent medical patient. I like how she acts as if this happens to every single trans person. And what does permanent medical patient mean? Isn't everybody a permanent medical patient? I mean, what, is that, what does that mean? Like I've I gotta go get health tests because I take testosterone. That's good, that's a good thing to do. You're putting these foreign hormones in your body. You gotta make sure that you're in line. We know it's not a natural thing to do. Side effects come with anything that you take. You do something, there's an effect. So you get a side effect, duh. Tragically, we've made it far too easy for kids to take this path, long before they're ready psychologically or emotionally to make such a life-altering decision. 
testosterone is easily obtained by today's teens. In Oregon, a 15-year-old can walk into a gender clinic. Yes, there are now gender clinics all over the country and walk out the same day with a prescription for testosterone without her parents' permission. I don't believe this for a second because PragerU has a way of twisting words. So I had to look it up. I couldn't find much about the specific instance of like a 15 year old obtaining hormones, but there was one place that tried to talk about it and guess who it was? It was Fox News. So Fox News wrote out this article and it says, under a first in the nation policy quietly enacted in January that many parents are only now finding out about, 15 year olds are now allowed to get a sex change operation. Many residents are stunned to learn that they can do it without parental notification, and the state will even pay through it through its Medicaid program, the Oregon Health Plan. Then I looked more into that. The thing with Oregon is that when you're 15, you can give medical consent. I took a screenshot right here. Okay, that's the age of consent for medical consent. Yeah, so that article was essentially just a bunch of bullshit that was trying to fearmonger people because the medical age of consent in Oregon is 15. That's what it has been for like 50 years, right? And they didn't just magically approve 15 year olds to get sex changes. Isn't it messed up how they misconstrue things about trans people all the time? It's so, it's so irritating. I don't know, I just thought that was an interesting find because I find it pretty hard to believe that you can go into a gender clinic and get testosterone without a letter or without even saying you're trans. You can't even, you can't even get cough syrup like that. You think you can get testosterone like that? 16 year old girls have been able to undergo double mastectomies, the removal of both breasts, without even a therapist's note. The way that they make this sound is to terrify people because when you go to get top surgery, at least in my experience, and every trans person that I know, you need to have like a doctor's letter and a, and a therapist's letter. There are surgeons who do informed consent, which you do not need a referral because the surgeon talks to you instead. It says here, it says, well, I need to see a therapist to be eligible for top surgery. And the answer is possibly. Many surgeons require a letter from a mental health professional that assesses your readiness for surgery. For some guys, the process of obtaining that letter can take months to years, depending on access, finances, and in some cases, gatekeeping on the part of the therapist. On the other hand, there are also surgeons who use the informed consent model and will provide services without a therapist letter. So that does exist, but it's just not as common as the other practices where you need a referral and a letter note and all that great stuff. Sorry, my voice just cracked. Damn it, testosterone. Look, look what it's done irreversible damage to my voice. Predictably, hasty gender transition, remember we're talking about teenagers here, is now leading to a lot of regret. New testimonials appear on YouTube almost every week from teens who acknowledge that they made a terrible mistake and warn others not to make the same one. Every week, there's a, there's a detransitioner posting on YouTube about detransitioning a new one every, every week and their regrets. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, I've definitely, I've seen that. Mm -hmm. Also, why is this woman always talking about the medical stuff? Like she's a doctor or a therapist. She's an author and in her book, she put misinformation. <laughs> so how do you protect your daughter from being drawn into this dangerous and growing trend? First, limit their exposure to social media as much as you can. Several academic studies have already linked the alarming rates of anxiety and depression to young girls' punishing experience on social media, a place that often makes them feel sad, unattractive, and alone. <laughs> That's, a, that's such a sad way to put it. That's true, I guess. Okay, but it could do the opposite too. Some people get on there and they feel sexy as hell because they have people hyping them up, right? I get it, but that's not that doesn't make somebody want to transition into a man. How does that correlate? <laughs> Second, oppose the teaching of gender ideology in your kid's school. In California, gender identity education begins in kindergarten and proceeds through high school. The theme is that kids' gender identity is totally independent of their physical sex and something that only they can know. Schools can and should insist that every child be treated respectfully without sowing gender confusion in an entire student population. I guess I don't really understand why teaching kids about trans people is so evil and so bad. What's wrong with saying, hey, transgender people exist? I mean, you taught us about boys and girls growing up. We're all taught about what boys do, what girls do, what boys like, what girls like. So what's the issue with talking about trans people? We are here, we exist. We did exist as kids. Some of us just didn't come out when we were that young because that's terrifying because your parents watch videos like this and then they talk all types of shit so you don't want to come out. These people always love to use the children as an example, like you're confusing our children with your trans identities. Do you think the stuff that you teach them isn't confusing? Third, and most importantly, remember that a teenager is still just a teenager. 
you don't have to agree with every identity proclamation your daughter comes up with. Yeah, a teenager is just a teenager. A stupid little baby bitch teenager. That's what you are watching this right now. Yeah, that's not how that works, Abigail. Teenagers can comprehend things. I was the most aware when I was a teenager. <laughs> now I'm an airhead. Knowledge of her identity will develop over time. Until then, being the adult in the relationship is the most loving thing you can do. Okay, so if knowledge of her identity will develop over time, what if she still feels the same way that she did five years ago? Then what do you do? What if she's like, oh shit, I'm, st I'm trans. What do you do then, Abigail? Do you cry? Do you write another book? What do you do? I'm Abigail Schreier, author of Irreversible Damage, The Transgender Craze Seducing Our Daughters for Prager University. I'm Abigail Shitstein, author of I'm Obsessed with FTM Transgenders and I Will Never Shut Up About Them for Shit Ass University. Thank you for watching this video. To keep PragerU videos free, please consider making a tax-deductible donation. <laughs> Why would that make PragerU videos free? YouTube videos are free. They just want money. These people raised 50000 People raised $52,000 for this YouTube channel. Imagine donating to a channel that literally lies about everything. Anyways, oh, I can get up now. I gotta get a new tripod, see? Because when I sit up like this, you can't see the top of my head, so I have to to go down here and talk like this. Oh, it makes me look a lot more shorter. But uh, anyways, I'm gonna go. So I hope you all enjoyed that video. I actually think next video, I'm gonna film all the way down here. So look forward to that. And I'm gonna go now. So hopefully there's another PragerU video to make fun of in the future. I love you all so much. Hope you have a great week. And, uh, and I don't know what else to say. All right, bye.